So what I wanted to do with this video is explain using another example uh, the idea of the budget constraint and the idea of the income and substitution effect. Uh, so here we have an example of a person who is trying to decide how many bags of chips and how many chocolate bars to consume. Uh, you'll see we have three indifference curves here labeled one through three, where one is the uh, lowest indifference curve and three is the highest. And so we'll start with the assumption that this person has $20 to spend, that chocolate bars cost $1.25 each, and that bags of chips cost $2 each. Uh, and so this lets us draw the budget constraint on the graph. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is just to divide income uh, by the price of each of the goods. Uh, and that will tell you where the budget constraint intersects with the uh, vertical and horizontal axis. So if you have $20 and chocolate bars are a dollar and a quarter each, you can buy up to 16 chocolate bars with that 20 bucks as long as you don't buy any chips. Uh, and conversely, if you spend all your money on chips uh, at $2 a bag, you can get 10 for $20. Uh, so there is the um, budget constraint uh, that tells us all of the different combinations of chocolate bars and bags of chips that we can get. Uh, and so I should say that in this example, uh, even though bags of chips and chocolate bars are discrete goods. You usually can't buy half a bag of chips or half a chocolate bar. Uh, we're going to uh, sort of ignore that distinction and imagine that we, we can buy fractional chocolate bars or chips. Uh, so point A here indicates the optimal choice uh, with these preferences and that budget constraint. So that's the highest indifference curve that just touches the uh, the budget constraint, uh, and that means this person is going to get a, something on the order of 11 chocolate bars and uh, uh, maybe three and uh, three quarters bags of chips. Now we're going to imagine uh, that the price of a bag of chips falls. Uh, they're now a dollar rather than two dollars a bag. Uh, and so that means that if you spend all of your $20 on chips, you'd be able to buy 20 bags. Um, now, remember here, only one price has changed, so we can still buy 16 chocolate bars. Um, so here's the new budget constraint um, where uh, it intersects the x-axis at 20 and the, and the, and the uh, I should say the bags of chips axis at 20 and the chocolate bar axis at 16. Uh, and so with this new budget constraint, we intersect indifference curve IC3 uh, and the person increases both the amount of chips and chocolate bars they consume. So chocolate bars goes from 11 to something like 12 and a half and chips goes from three and three quarters to looks like uh, just about seven. Um, so let's put the original budget constraint back in there. Um, and so one effect of having uh, a price decline, like the price decline for the bag of chips, is that it opens up a whole bunch of other options uh, that the consumer can uh, afford. So everything in this light blue area uh, between the two budget constraints are sort of new options that this consumer could, in theory, afford. And so one way to think of that is that this is um, like increasing the consumer's income. So they're richer in some sense because the price of chips uh, has fallen. They have more options available to them and they're going to consume um, at least as, you know, they're going to consume more uh, than they uh, were able to before. And so one way that we can um, kind of break down this change between A and B 
that takes account of this aspect of the lower price of chips that makes the consumer richer uh, is to ask um, what increase in income would the consumer have to have uh, to make them just as well off as the price change of the bag of chips. Uh, so in other words, if we were to leave the relative prices of chips and chocolate bars the same and just increase the consumer's income so that they were able to afford a bundle that's on indifference curve three, meaning that they'll be just as well off as they would be with the price decline in the bag of chips, um, we can draw a hypothetical budget constraint that has that property so that it is an increase in income without a change in the relative price of chips of chocolate bars that gets the person up to that IC3 indifference curve uh, at point C. Okay. And so this hypothetical exercise allows us to talk about the income effect of the price change, which is what happens when, so the income effect of the price change is moving from bundle A to bundle C, um, and the substitution effect is moving from bundle C to bundle B. So remember that bundle C is a kind of hypothetical. It's not something that the consumer really chooses. It's just a way of breaking the change in consumption into a piece that relates to the fact that the consumer can now afford to buy more, the income effect, because prices have fallen, uh, and a component that relates to the change in the relative price of uh, chips and chocolate bars. So you could say that um, the income effect uh, is an increase in the consumption of chocolate bars by uh, go, so going from 11 to around 13. So uh, an increase of three chocolate bars um, and no change in the bag of number of bags of chips, so still around three and three quarters. Um, the substitution effect um, is going from, from C to B is to decrease the consumption of chocolate bars uh, from uh, round about, f looks like 13 and a half, 13 uh, down to uh, 11 and a half. Uh, and to increase the consumption of bags of chips um, from uh, round about four to around seven. So that's the income and substitution effects uh, and an example of a budget constraint that involves two goods and a fixed amount of income that the uh, person is consuming.